Welcome to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. I'm Dr. Edmund Sulkowski, and I'd like to welcome two guests this morning on the show. Darlene Butka. Darlene, welcome so much. You, you were on the show before, and it's always Hi. a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. I'm excited to be here today. And we have a new guest, and, and this is Patrick McDonald. And Thank we're you. going to be talking about insurance, everything from car insurance, home insurance, and health, not health insurance, but life, life insurance. Yes. And I think it's so important because there are, I think there's a misunderstanding of what we need and how we need to be covered and what the potential is when we're not covered properly. So I thought it would be a wonderful idea to help educate our audience as to these different types of insurance. Now, you're, Patrick, you're the owner and proprietor of uh, Progressive Insurance Planners here That's in correct. Bridgeville. That's correct. And what, how long have you been in business there at Progressive Planners? Well, the business has been uh, established since 1983, and I've been the owner and in the business for 31, 31 years this coming month. 31 years. Yes. And I know Darlene has been in the insurance business probably for that same length of time or a little bit longer even. Oh, maybe a couple I months I think she longer. has me by a couple months. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. think so. <laughs> so so um, you've seen insurance change over all of these years. We often talk about that, how over the, over the course of time, how different it was 28 years ago than it is today, absolutely. Yeah. And what are some of the major changes that you've seen? And you, either one could, could just jump in at any time. Well, I think the advent of technology has, has been the largest shift in the insurance business, how people uh, recognize different companies more than they ever did, uh, and how people shop for their insurance, where do they get their recommendations from. Due yeah. to the internet? Most likely due to the internet, yeah. So people uh, are still shopping online more than ever. And of course, I still have the preference of that face-to-face -face professional agent client relationship, I think is really vitally important. Well, yeah. I think that's actually, to me, the most important thing. I do too. Th because when you look on, in on the internet for anything, or you're clicking and whatever you're doing, there is no correspondence, there is no customer service. If you have a question, you call, you press one, press three, press five, whatever it is, and then if, you, if you're gonna do some uh, online communication, you type in a question, and then you sit there and wait for the response, half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is. It's not an instantaneous response. We have that inside joke in the agency. It's 1-800-we-don't-know-who-you-are, <laughs> rather than getting the face, friendly face that you know. And Quite frankly, you need to have a licensed, qualified professional with experience if you're going to get the best recommendations today. Most people today don't know what to ask for, what to shop for, or what they need. We, we see these blurbs on TV, you know, you, you see them from all these major, major companies. And it's interesting, your company is Progressive Insurance Planners, but there is a big international, I would assume, insurance company called Progressive. Correct. So Progressive Insurance Planners is an agency. Uh, we are a brokerage operation, which means we represent many, many companies, not just one. So we are a grocery store of companies with multiple products, all A-plus companies, and that gives our clients a lot of value because we have different price tags. So not one particular company has everything that you need, and not one particular company may be competitive at the time for your particular situation. So if you're going to State Farm, Allstate, Progressive Insurance, mm -hmm. the, these big I'm gonna big box companies yes, they are. Uh, you're basically buying their products that they have a captive audience and a captive product they're selling they're a captive company and so that's there's a difference in that as well so you know uh, people think today that the name brand recognition is very important but there are many companies that people have not heard of that are absolutely outstanding companies and have better products than some of these large uh, companies that have been around for a long time, Erie State, Farm, Allstate, what we call the captive companies. Yeah. See, uh, I, I picked that word, word up and that's, that's actually an industrial word. It is. Yeah. It How is. about that it's one? It is. it is. It is. But let me tell you what I think is really important. When you talk about coverage, there are so many clients, people out there that have no idea what they don't have until they have a loss and then it's too late. And my what I've seen lately, like the last maybe five years, I've had over a dozen people call me and say, I need you to help my kids. They went online and bought the wrong, pro wrong thing, the wrong coverage, 
had a claim and they want me to fix it and I can't, it's too late. So that's why it is important face to face uh, yeah, to really find so. out what coverage do you need, what coverage do you want, what coverage can you afford? Because price is important, but here's the thing, when he was talking about those companies, it's fabulous products with exceptional coverage and great claims. So I think customer service is very important. Yeah, absolutely. And you do something, you're an associate with, with Progressive yes. Insurance Planners. You refer to yourself, and uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm a client, as a concierge agent. Yes, so I do. Would you define the difference between, let's say, a regular insurance agent and a concierge insurance agent? Yes. I know exactly what that is because a regular agent might be in his office, her office, uh, from 10 until maybe 2 or 3 o'clock every day. The staff is there before he or she gets there. The staff is there be after he, you know, he leaves. And you can only reach that agent during those times. So why I, when I went, the reason I became a personal concierge insurance agent is because I did start so many years ago, so long ago. And back then it was all about customer service being available. When I went to Wharton Business School, they said, stand up and, and tell us about yourself. And I said, my name's Darlene Butka, and I'm a personal concierge insurance agent working outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And after that class, seven people from Connecticut, California, Montana, everywhere, New Jersey came up to me and said, we're very much interested in that designation. And how much did it cost you? Where did you have to go to school? What do we have to do? And I said, it's very easy. I made it up because you can call me seven or eight o'clock at night. You can call me on the weekends. Uh, you can reach Patrick on the weekends. You can reach him in the evening. You don't find agents who have been in the business a long time, you don't see that they still have that availability. Well, I think that's fair. But I, but I also think it's, you know, it's just like in our culture, our DNA in the agency is, is you know, service first. Yeah, you know, we do true. represent great companies, but more than that, People really just want to know that they can get you. You, you need to be accessible. And, and that's a choice that you make, uh, and, and, and you can go both ways. There are many quality agents out there that work a nine to five job. I don't think our job is nine to five. Claims happen 24 seven. And so you have to be accessible, and our clients, uh, they desire that, they deserve that, and we provide that. Yeah, I, I you know, I've had experience for 30 years with one major company, and if you wanted to call them after I don't know, I think it was four o'clock, maybe five o'clock. Mm -hmm. It went to some central location, and they may have even been in the office afterwards, but their phones were shut off mm -hmm. automatically by, by the corporate people. That's right. And all those went to a, a center. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no customer service there. We'll take the message and mm -hmm. get back to you. Right. And, and everyone deserves their personal life, so it's not to say that we work 24 hours a day. But you choose to make yourself accessible if you're in business and you want to be in business for a long time. You know, the, the people that have been in business for many years uh, have made that decision. Accessibility is the key for your clients, and our business is built from within. So when customers know that they can get you, that you have uh, attention to detail and you're accessible, uh, that word spreads pretty quickly, yes. and that's how business has grown. And that's how our business has grown from within. And so isn't it true that many people think, oh, I have been with XYZ company for 38 years, I can't leave them. <laughs> and it's true, 40 years ago, that was important to be with the same carrier. Yeah, that's a change because, in the business today. Correct. But it well, doesn't matter anymore. I tend to be one of those loyal people. I've had the same cell service from the time that I got cell phone in 88. Right. Wow. And although the company kept changing, <laughs> you know, from this company to that company, bought back by the original company, I'm still there. And, uh, you know, every once in a while you say, well, I'm, maybe I'm being charged too much, it's time to change, but that's a hassle. It is. You've had good service for the most part, so you kind of stick. And you do that, I, I've had the same physician for 30 years. I've had the same th dentist for 40 years. So you know he, what I mean? and, and, and you're saying that uh, you, because you like their, I'll, I'll call it bedside manner. Well, your insurance agent has the same, Absolutely. You, we have a bedside manner that customers either like and relate to or they don't. And most people today, I think, are looking more for that feeling rather than the 1-800, I don't know who you are. Yeah. They want that 
that comfort level of looking across the desk and eye to eye with their agent. And you know, we're the ones that are going to be there uh, for you when something happens. And that same thing is happening with the medical, and I don't want to call it an industry, but it's become an industry. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, you know, people are migrating from seeing their physician five minutes twice a year to concierge physicians mm -hmm. that are having, paying a small fee every month, but actually having provider service. Yes. And, and, and I think that's, that's key in the medical profession. And as I'm seeing and experiencing, it's key along with the, with the insurance profession as well. Well, what people don't understand is the companies, uh, they, they haven't, the, the advantage that customers have when they go to a brokerage agency is with the multiple companies that we represent, price tags change from year to year. Only an agent would know that. You know, we're, we're bound by the performance of the company, which then correlates down to rates. Customers don't realize that. You know, it's claims experience, et cetera, performance of the company that determines what rates a lot of people pay, along with many other factors. Um, and as performance goes, if the company has a bad year, they push those costs off onto the customer. And so when you've been with a company for a number of years and you have a concierge agent, we have the ability to see firsthand what's coming up. Company had a rate change. You didn't do anything to deserve a rate increase, but the company pushed those costs off onto the customer. We have the ability to see that in advance, so we can take a look in advance and see if we can keep you level. We may have to move you to another carrier because of that rate change. People don't realize that loyalty, as Darlene was just speaking about, isn't necessarily in your best interest. You wouldn't know that necessarily. The general public doesn't know that. Well, you, you, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And I, I just experienced it with my cell phone. It went up $10. There you now, go. There's no reason for it to go up $10. Nothing goes down today. <laughs> After the show, I'm calling them and say, hey, why did in one month my cell bill go up $10? You know, it's, it, it's high enough as it is. Right. So, so we're, we're going to sit down and find out what so why rather it than, is. So rather than you shopping when you're not aware of why you're shopping or you saw a price change, we shop for you. And that's the difference. Captive companies, you're bound to them. Their good performance or bad, rate increases or rate decreases, it's about our ability to take care of our customer beyond just what company we recommend to them and the product that we recommend to them. Pricing is important. We do the shopping for you. Okay, so I want to break this down and hit automobile insurance first, mm -hmm. and then we'll okay. talk about home yeah. and then talk about life insurance. Okay. So why, do, why, first of all, do I need automobile insurance? Pennsylvania I mean, says you have to have it. That's it's okay, the law. so state law. It's state law. So are there state law and minimums that I have to have? Absolutely. So, requirements. So can you define those requirements for us? Yes. Uh, Pennsylvania state law requires that you carry a minimum liability of 15, 30, and 5. And that's the big three. So what's that mean? It's liability coverage, 15,000 per person, 30,000 per accident, 5,000 of medical pay. 15, 30, and 5. So, so f the 15 applies to vehicle damage? 15,000. If somebody sues If somebody you. is, uh, it's liability protection, which is your protection against a lawsuit. So if I slam into somebody's car and I have that minimum coverage required by the state, the insurance company is going to cover 15,000? Up to that limit. And then it's on me? Correct. Oh. But the state minimum is 5,000. The 15 that he was referring to is the liability. So if you hit one person and they sue you and the courts award them $87,000 or 187,000, whatever, your insurance is only gonna pay 15,000 and you are gonna make payments on the balance. You're gonna sell your house, any assets you have, you could be in a serious problem. People, and that's don't, people don't understand that, and that's although, although you're legal, although you're legal by carrying state minimums and pricing goes with that inexpensively, uh, you are highly exposed. And, and if you're a, um, a married person or a single person and you own your own home or, or even if you rent, you have assets, you have some money in the bank, you're a working individual, it's pretty easy to get to a large number. It's a very litigious society we live oh, in today. Oh, there's certainly a lot of lawyers advertising <laughs> on <laughs> they, TV. Uh, and they are. You can lose everything. So you need a professional to recommend to you the difference between state minimums 
and what protection you need so that you don't have exposures. So the, the 15 who covers that, what's the middle 30? Well, that's one person sues you, it's 15. More than one, it could be four people in the car that you hit. All four could sue you and the maximum they could get would be 30,000. Per person, per accident. Mm -hmm. Correct. And the last number applies to? The property damage you talked about. So if you hit into a BMW and, and you did $10,000 worth of damage, only 5,000 would be 5, paid by 000. your insurance. You would make the payments on the other the balance. Wow, that's almost scary because there are so many cars on the road. No. Everybody's texting or talking or what, searching the internet while they're driving. They're distracted. You, you know, the other day I saw somebody, uh, <sighs> scary. I saw this lady driving and she had a cigarette in one hand, oh. a cup of coffee in the other hand, <gasps> and she had her cell phone, I don't know where, but she was down like this. And driving? I'm driving. And I'm opposite her and I'm going, this is unbelievable. I mean, it's probably one of the worst things that I've seen. That yeah. is horrible. You know? And the laws are continuing to address the, the distracted driver uh, situation that's occurring today. Um, and the insurance industry is starting to conform in that regard as well. Uh, and and those uh, things are gonna merge together at some point, uh, and there'll be new legislation and laws written in to the auto laws. We don't know exactly what they are, but it's, it's uh, coming more and more now, and it's gonna have a, a, a part in the rates, that structures that we see. Yeah, I, I love cell phones. I use them a lot as mm -hmm. a tool. I'm not, as we were talking about this on the previous show about being addicted to, your, to all this technology, and I think it's easy to become addicted to it. But I think that's one of the worst things that has happened with driving situations. I yeah. mean, just yesterday, as Darlene knows, I put a car into storage for the winter, mm -hmm. and I'm driving it to the storage place, and somebody on 19 <laughs> pushes me in, into the center lane, and I look over, and it was an older <laughs> guy, uh, and he's texting. texting. Yeah. You know, and, and you sit there and go, I could have been sideswiped, because some idiot is texting while he's driving, going 45, 50 miles an hour. Well, we really try to recommend to our customers, look, the technology is here today. You have a hands-free option on your cell phone. Put the cell phone down, talk through your radio. Most cars have that Bluetooth capability now. That's what's there. Put the, put the cell phone down, be safe, be safe. <laughs> what, I, what I've done recently, Patrick, is, uh, you know, I have blockers on my phone because I get calls, you know, from everybody, I don't know how but yes. we, we all getting those we know the calls feeling and so yes forth. Yeah. so i put a blocker on my car on my cell phone that if you're not in my list you're not getting you're not a hold getting of me. in you right. leave, if it's important yeah. you leave, leave a, a message, message i'll get back to it because right. right. it's become uh, annoying and really distracting because you're you, you're driving down the road and your tendency is t is to pick up that cell phone when it mm -hmm. rings and my cars have all that bluetooth stuff and everything and that's much better, but it's still distracting. You know, and you're taking your eyes like off the road that, and doing uh, this. Some people like that time in their car to think to themselves without being disturbed. Yeah. You know, you're talking all day with people, uh, talking all day with customers, you get in the car, ah, it's quiet. You might like that little peace and quiet for a bit. Downtime. Or, yeah, a little bit of brain downtime, right? Yeah. I know I do sometimes. Yeah, ab sure. absolutely. Yeah. You know, because you're getting inundated with text, emails, phone calls, you know, and, and sometimes you're on overload. Correct. So we have this state minimum requirement. What other factors enter it? Let's say um, I have a car that's financed. Does that require additional insurance? It does. Most, <coughs> most finance companies, whether you lease or whether you buy today, uh, require that you have full coverage on your vehicle, uh, which then would include both comprehensive and collision coverage and they generally require higher limits of liability than the state minimums as well if you lease or uh, buy a vehicle. So then your limits would be higher and then you would carry deductibles for comp and collision. Comprehensive uh, coverage and collision uh, differs. Collision is just what it says. If you collide with something, comprehensive is anything other than that collision, like hitting an animal, theft, fire in your vehicle, those would be under comprehensive. So if you think collision, collide, everything other would be comprehensive. And most finance companies require much higher limits and to carry deductibles as well for the life of your lease or your loan. Okay, so collision is, <coughs> if I'm involved in an accident, I hit somebody mm -hmm. and somebody hits me as well. Correct. 
So what happens if they're uninsured? You know, some of the states surrounding us, I would assume, don't have the, the same laws that we do? That's correct. In Pennsylvania, and what a lot of people don't realize is uh, the different parts of the policy. And again, this goes back to your agent, your relationship with your agent, them knowing you as a person and what your situation is and how we get to our recommendations. Uninsured, underinsured portion of your policy, that's the part of the policy that protects you. The liability protects the other guy, his ability to sue. Uninsured, underinsured is your protection. If somebody comes down the street and they have no insurance or not enough insurance and they hit you and they do damage, your policy's uninsured, underinsured portion comes into play and takes care of you. So you always want the uninsured, underinsured portion to be the same or higher than your liability limits. And a lot of people have it the other way around. And so it pays to have somebody that knows the coverages so that they can recommend the right protection Instead for you. Instead of looking you, at some menu online you. and clicking. Correct. Right. They don't know what the limits mean. And more than that, they don't know the coverage triggers in an event of an accident, how, what part of the policy comes into play. Right. And that's where the, a professional who's knowledgeable, licensed, can make those recommendations for you. And a good e example is if somebody's in an accident, they think since that person hit them, they're going to pay for their medical. And that is not the case. In your medical, even if it's not your fault, it's the medical on your policy that will be the primary payer. Right. Up to a certain amount? Whatever you Whatever have the limit is on, on the your policy. policy yes. Then your hospitalization will kick in. The other person, even though it's their fault, they never pays for your medical. So your medical limits come into play first in every situation where there's an injury or a medical bill. Mm -hmm. No matter a fault, your limit on your policy would pay up to that limit first for any injuries. Okay, so if you have a $5,000 limit there, the first $5,000 is covered by your own policy. Your policy. No and matter a fault. And then it goes on to your own personal health insurance. Correct. Correct. And then what happens when you exhaust that? I guess that where a lawyer would come in. And that's why then you would have to sue the other care person, right? And see, see what, and let's pretend you did, you had to do that because you're in uh, a rehab learning to walk and talk again, which these Serious things, injury. Yeah, right. this really happens. So you sue them and they have the minimum, right? So they are underinsured. The courts are awarding you 912000 but they are uninsured, so you can pull that coverage from your own uninsured coverage. Underinsured, right. Right, underinsured, because they didn't have enough. And then uninsured, somebody maybe loses their job and they, they cancel their insurance. Missed their payment, yeah, their policy they lapsed, they weren't aware of it. They're uninsured, they hit you. Same thing. Again, your policy comes in to protect you as long as your policy is structured properly, that exposure doesn't exist then. And again, that gets into the recommendations, and people don't realize that. So it happens this, every day. Today. This is all protection for the unexpected. Correct. Exactly. Insurance, that's why you have it. We all have it, we all need it, it's required. What people don't understand is, when you see the ads on TV, we can save you 15%, call us. It's all based on a number and saving money. What people forget is, the exposure that exists when you pick that low number, when you're there for premium savings only, you've potentially exposed yourself and your family to unnecessary liability and risk. You know, those ads on TV, actually, I hate to watch TV, not so much <laughs> because of TV, it's because of the, the, commercials, the commercials, the ads. They're yeah. actually mm -hmm. insulting, I think, to people's often. intelligence often. often. Yeah, often exactly. Times, you're right. You know, Darlene, mm -hmm. what should I do if I'm involved in an accident? Whether it's my fault, of course, uh, Pennsylvania, I think, has no fault, right? Is, is that a term, no fault? I remember hearing that. Yes, the term no fault applies only to medical. To medical. Right. Okay, so if I cause an accident or I'm, somebody else hits me, mm -hmm. what's the first thing I should do? Uh, call the police. Just immediately, 911 it. Uh, because you need that. So many people don't because the other driver says, oh, I'm sorry, I hit you. I'm so are you okay? And then they change their story when they talk to their insurance agent. I think but protect yourself is uh, number one. Number one, uh, you have to be selfish when it comes time, you know, for an accident, whether it's your fault or not your fault, because uh, things get lost in the translation. Uh, people forget what happens because it's a 
scary situation. Oftentimes people are, sh are shaken horribly oh, right. as a result oh, of the accident. They don't recall, they don't remember. So first thing is uh, make sure that uh, there's no injuries. Uh, if, if there is, you know, obviously we want to make sure you take care of yourself first, get your vehicles in a safe place. If you have the ability, call the police. Okay, so you said get your vehicle in a safe place. So 19 is a, is a busy highway. It is. So you're, you, you're involved in an accident. You want to move those vehicles off? To avoid being hit again. Or again. In, in, the, in a place uh, that's unsafe. Yeah. It happens a lot today where people are involved in an accident and there's oncoming traffic moving, moving. They don't mm -hmm. realize that there's been an accident. They're driving 45, right. 50 miles an hour. Ra 70. Rainy day t today like today. Yeah. And the mist is coming up and all of a sudden they're on you. And now you're in the middle of the lane and they haven't stopped in time and bam, now we have another uh, secondary accident because we have not been able to get our vehicles to a safe place. Protect yourself first. Try to get your vehicles if possible off the road so that you're in a safe place. Right. So, so you're not worried about the dynamics of the accident I'm not, trying to prove, prove any I'm of that I'm not at that point. What, uh, uh, oftentimes uh, there's reconstruction that's done by uh, the, the police uh, at the time, depending on where the accident is. But uh, in a lot of cases, uh, because of technology today, obviously we're going to be able to take cell phone pictures. My recommendation immediately is to do that. Take pictures all around of all damage. To both, take pictures, both, vehicles both vehicles or all vehicles. Sure. Whether it's your fault or not your fault, you take pictures of your vehicle, the other party's vehicle, the license plate, and make sure everyone is okay. Uh, be polite uh, regardless of that fault. Uh, so uh, you know, it's always helpful because that's how you gather information. If you, you know, and, and I know sometimes people can it's be really, nasty. you know, they've got their brand new Beamer and it's wrecked now. Oh. They just had it for a week and that lady hit her and mm, they're not very happy about it. No. And, and all right, so uh, cars are, you know, real personal items to a lot of people. So, um, but if you can gather as much information uh, at the scene as possible. Including taking pictures of yourself and correct. anybody sure. else. Correct. Sure. And, and then just politely exchange information, ask for their name, their address, if you can take a picture of their driver's license, be very helpful if they're willing to give that to you. If not, a picture of their insurance ID card, if that would be helpful to you. If they're not willing to do that, don't put yourself in a situation. Just take pictures of their license plate and that damage and yours and wait for the police. We, we have a minute before a break sure. here. But what about gathering a witness? <coughs> uh, if there's someone that's willing to do that, you would take their Wonderful. data as soon as right. possible. It's always helpful to have somebody that backs up or has seen something that maybe even you have forgotten because you're shaken due to the accident. Right. And it happens all the time. We're gonna take a quick break here and we'll be back at Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners with Patrick McDonald and Darlene Butka talking about some important information on, on insurance in general. I do have one question for you to think about during the break. What about dash cams? We'll be back in a minute at Healthy Ooh. Pets, Healthy Owners. Welcome back to Healthy Pets, Healthy Owners. I'm Dr. Edmund Sokowski, and we're here with Patrick McDonald and Darlene Butka from the Progressive Insurance Planners in Princeville, Pennsylvania. Right. Thank you. So we were talking uh, about this dash cam. Hmm. Yes. So what can you tell us about dash cams on cars here in the state of Pennsylvania? Well, it's becoming more and more prevalent technology invading our lives. And I'm be careful and cautious about using the word invade, but the dash cams are not legal yet in the state of Pennsylvania. However, that doesn't stop people from using them. But in the event of an accident, footage from a dash cam would be <clears throat> inadmissible at this point in time. It's like, uh, you know, radar detectors are still illegal in the state of Pennsylvania, but you see them every day. Yeah. So our recommendation for our uh, customers still is use your cell phone, the legal technology that we have, uh, that would be helpful to you uh, and to avoid. Uh, it becomes a privacy issue. In my mind, it's a privacy issue. It's my own personal belief. Um, uh, the dash cams are a privacy issue, and that's why the state of Pennsylvania has not yet allowed those. 
Yeah, but that's it may a, change. And I understand that, and, and I've actually read that law myself because I had a dash cam when I lived in Arizona mm -hmm. on my cars, and you know I came here and wanted to find out where I stood and went yeah, through the yeah. law because they are legal in Arizona. But you drive down the street, and everybody's got a ca dash cam. I mean, not a dash cam, but a camera on a building or on the street from the from from the municipality or the doorbells. State. Doorbells. 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 Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Ring, ring central. Ring. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they're helpful uh, in, in the event of a crime or uh, illegal activity. In a lot of cases, those. Uh, as it relates to the auto laws in Pennsylvania, uh, and as I say in Pennsylvania, the insurance industry uh, moves very slow. The state moves very slow. It's hard to get new laws as it relates to auto insurance passed or approved in Pennsylvania. Uh, very slow. And it's been that way for as well, long as I've been in the business, 31 years. Born so. and raised here. Yes. All right. Lived in Arizona for a number of years. This is the most backward state, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no. and, it, uh, and I'll just cite a, just a quick example. Yeah, I moved yeah. to Arizona. I go to the DMV, and I hand in my driver's license and the, and the title to my car. They hand me back an Arizona driver's license and a title to my car. Right then and there. Right then and there. Mm -hmm. I come back here, Not here, and it took me two days to get a driver's license, <sighs> but I was raised and had a driver's license since 16 here, and you know what the irony of all of it was? They gave me the exact same number they do. A as I had when I was 16 years it old. It remains. Yeah, it remains in the system. But yeah. they, couldn't, they, they couldn't just go they by They just couldn't that. reproduce no. it. No, right. no. And then it took two weeks to get my, or three yeah. weeks to get my title back on the car, and you sit there and say, you know, I had to go get a driver's, I mean, a birth certificate because I couldn't find mine. It was in some box in the move. Sure. All you got to do is press a button on these high-tech computers, right. print it out, pay your fee, and be done. It's a matter nah, of it's not the way it works. It's a matter of resources today and departments and budgets and all that. Pennsylvania is uh, historically a little behind the times. Yeah. They're getting better. I can say they are getting better. Uh, but as it relates to our business, Turtle, turtle speed. Yeah. Turtle speed. Yeah. Darling, what are some of the things that affect our premiums? Because, you know, what we're paying every month for this protection impacts us on a daily basis. Absolutely. It does. And do you know, people don't realize that they think, well, it's just the car that I drive. If Am I going to drive a Corvette or am I going to drive a, a family sedan? So, yes, the car does matter about your premium. And is that yes, because of the repair? the cost to repair or replace, mm -hmm. uh, yes, that is Today exactly. especially, uh, very expensive, right. even to the paint, even down to the paint has become, pricing on paint, these specialized paints with metallic and the clear coats, are, they've become very expensive. You know, a small plastic part uh, has to be replaced and, and a lot of the vehicles today have these ground effects packages on them and, and uh, body shops will tell you, a small ding, three grand. Do you remember like that. years ago? Years ago, you'd have a little fender bender. It would be a no couple problem. hundred dollars. No, yeah, no big deal. Right. <gasps> that is not the case well, today. Well, years ago, we actually had bumpers that yeah. did Well, dead. that's true. Now, but they, that, now they deform steel. and crack. Oh. Good old steel. Oh, okay. <laughs> not but fiberglass or plastic. plastic. And that is so <laughs> right. true. It is, And that's why the costs have Part gone up yeah. uh, because of all, all of that. But there are so many factors. People don't realize that their credit rating determines. You c two people could live in the same neighborhood, same zip code, have the identical cars, identical driving record, be the identical age, but because one has better credit than the other, their rates will be better. So does that only occur when you're putting a new vehicle on or when you're uh, uh, applying for insurance or is that affect, let's say your credit goes, you know, credit goes up and down every month, Life. depending on how much you have on your charge card or, Life or all that stuff. Life yeah. affects your credit. So, so let's say you have an 850 and it goes down to 800. Well, that's still excellent credit rating. Mm -hmm. So that wouldn't mean anything. It wouldn't. But if you went from an 800 to a 700, then they, a month later, can say your premium went up? It could. We want to be careful to say too. We, as agents, we don't pull your credit report. The insurance company gives you a credit score, which is a score related to a number of factors. Partly how you pay your bills, they get a general, they don't pull your credit report. It's a soft. It's just it's a soft right. uh, inquiry. They get an idea about who you are, 
uh, what type of debt you have and how you pay your bills. bills. Soft score, they don't pull a credit report. But that score is a major, major part of how your premium is calculated today. As Darlene said, along with other factors, your zip code that you live in, the kind of vehicles that you drive, age, driving record, uh, vehicle loss history, uh, how many tickets or accidents you've had, et cetera, all become part of the rating factor. So why is zip code important? Territories uh, are more loss prevalent than others. Uh, the eastern part of the state of Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, et cetera, uh, when you look at uh, claims results by company, uh, more towards the eastern part of the state, especially in the, uh, in the Philly area, uh, claims exorbitant, meaning uh, they're experiencing different types of claims at a much higher level there. And those rates trickle over to Western Pennsylvania, believe it or not, and, and that's what happens. Rate, rate factors do matter where you live. So if you lived in Washington County and then you moved to Philadelphia or the five county area, your insurance rate would go up 3.26% more. So over three, a little bit over three times. Yeah. I, is there a difference between Washington County and Allegheny County? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and also a difference from in Allegheny County, let's say you live in Bethel Park, what if you lived in Mount Washington? In Mount Washington or downtown? Right. So they view so the city versus yes. the suburb mm -hmm. differently. Different so there is, it is absolutely. So oh, and they have all the Saint statistics. Claire, it's no different than really living in Peters Township as far as demographic Correct. and Correct. and, and They area. treat it very similarly. However, the insurance companies today, as with all in, in every aspect of insurance, it's all st statistics. It's all numbers. We're just a number it's all number. results. They have the ability. Uh, and, and some companies have the ability today, you know, with, with all of the new technology, uh, and they're using all these new algorithms and analytics, okay? Artificial intelligence is a big deal. They gather data at a, at a rate that w they were never able to do it before. And they are changing and adjusting their rating factors, some companies on a daily basis. It's yeah, that's, amazing. That's scary. That is a huge change in the industry that we've seen uh, that wasn't happening back in the days. We right. had does age it. impact? Yes. It certainly does. Yes. yes. The older you are, uh, the more likely that you'll uh, pay a higher premium as we age. So it's yeah. younger and older? Yes, seniors Absolutely. and uh, like you know, discrimination it does me. indeed, yeah. but it is a fact. Careful not to use that word. No, it's a fact. <laughs> the insurance industry says, no, it's not discrimination, but yeah. you know, we as agents, remember, we as agents and brokers who help our clients, we pay insurance the same as you do. Uh, we don't get a break. You don't get a break because you work for the... Because we work for here. or represent yeah. one particular company or another. You know, uh, married, I had two young children at one time with lots of vehicles on the policy. Uh, accidents happen, tickets happen, and mom and dad bear the brunt of it. So uh, a lot of family situations, we've been in them. We are sympathetic to that, and we try our best to help in that regard. So if I have a laptop in my car, and somebody breaks into my car and steals my laptop. Mm -hmm. Is that under my auto policy or my home policy? Your home policy. Your home policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk now about what we need to do to cover ourselves in home insurance. If you only if you have maybe three hours, we could go <laughs> over it. We could no, go we've over got it. about fifteen minutes. Okay. But because, <laughs> and this is what people don't realize. Um, there are some policies that will cover you <coughs> for more electronics or more personal effects in your car than, it, than other carriers will. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the coverage that you have. So the home coverage today, uh, and, and you know, we're putting a broad brush on a lot of our topics today with our answers because uh, well, we it gets more defined. We're under a time constraint, so just be careful to say it's much more complicated. What goes into us rating, a new customer comes to us with a homeowner's policy that they have with company ABC. We're gonna take a look at that declaration page and that's where we start. And we look at what coverage they have on their home, uh, the A coverage, which is the structure of their home. And, and so that coverage fire. is based on a lot of different things. It's the square foot of the home, the, the type of material used to build the home. Is it brick, is it frame, uh, two-story, ranch house, what type of roof, how old, et cetera. All those things go into uh, what uh, the amount of coverage that we have on the structure. And then there's inside the home, personal property. And generally, personal property is a, a percentage 
uh, of the amount that we carry on the dwelling. Uh, there's loss of use coverage. If there's a loss and you have to be away from the home, that part of the policy pays for you to stay outside the home, hotel motel efficiency, while your home is being reconstructed, liability, medical payments to others, all parts of a homeowner's policy, all different with every insurance company. So again, licensed, experienced agent to determine is your home covered properly? If it burnt to the ground, what happens? If someone broke in, what happens? If you had water damage from below and, and your basement was flooded, what happens? All these things can come into play with a homeowner's policy. So for example, my washer ma washing machine hose breaks, mm -hmm. floods my house, what happens? Call your agent because you, if you have the right policy, you'll be able to, to put in a claim. So you say the right policy it doesn't automatically, uh, average homeowner's policy doesn't oh, cover that, no, correct. that type of No, it does of not. It does not. You have to have the right product. Correct. And, and the right coverages. Yes. More, more than, you know, companies have different tiers of products. Uh, I, and I'll just use a, a word, you know, uh, grand, medium, low. And every homeowner would like to think that their home is their castle, but the right policy on their home, it may not be grand. It may not be appropriate for them to be in that particular their home may not qualify for that particular band of coverage. Because of the age of the house? Age of the house, type of construction, um, you know, age of the roof is a big thing today. And, and a lot because of, of water damage le leaking? A lot of insurance companies are putting a big emphasis on that today. And if your home has a roof uh, that's older than 20 to 25 years, you're paying a, a significantly higher premium. Okay, so... Propensity for claim or damage or the life, life expectancy of a roof today that's in that area now. So then if, if I have a house that's 20 years old and mm -hmm. I put a new roof on it, I should be calling my, Absolutely. my concierge agent Absolutely. and saying and I put a new roof way, on my house. Because and that could no get way. you another company with a better rate and a, and a break in premium, certainly. Same thing with the furnace and, and all of that. Updates make a yep. big difference. That's so true. Yep. All Especially relates to claims. Here where yes. we live in Western Pennsylvania, there's a lot of older, lovely homes that need different coverage than the new modern homes. So it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all plan not here for your home not. coverage. Right. And if you have the right agent, it's all about relationship. That agent knowing who you are and what your situation is from a, from a risk. We, we assess every risk as, as you are a client. And it's more about the relationship than it is about the risk because it's how we interact. We know what questions to ask. You don't know what questions to ask, we do. So we ask the questions that we know will identify the risks that we need to protect. Because what's important to you might not be important to someone else. Correct. Uh, some people have a lot of computers in their home. I mean, a lot. Whether it's because all their teenage children have the best computers, regardless. Or even if people work from their home. Right. And so other people have one little um, tablet and they right. don't they could care so all everybody is different everything right. is different so for example if I have a watch collection and I have homeowners policy <coughs> are my watches covered under the homeowners policy may or may not be yeah <laughs> and up to a certain limit with some companies and not with others so right. uh, an agent who knows that you have a watch collection or you've had that discussion again down to relationship knows you have a watch collection would know the limit that uh, jewelry, they, that would be considered jewelry, mm -hmm. would be covered uh, for all peril, meaning any type of loss. And if it's not enough to cover that, then we would need to schedule those watches separately to make sure that they would be covered in any event. So that's for an a loss. additional uh, premium. Just right. like fine arts mm -hmm. or crystals so or silver. And yes. Something of significant value we want to talk about. And, and look, we're not trying to add on coverages just to add on coverages, we're trying to let you know that there's an exposure there, if it's important to you right. to have that exposure covered in the event that that may happen, uh, then that's the reason why we have that discussion and add that coverage there. And each, each of those endorsement coverages uh, are not available with every company. So what about a slip and fall? Somebody's visiting, we have a slip and fall. What, ha ha what happens, happens all the time. And what's coverage there? And, and Whatever you know, how does that work? Some people only have $100,000 worth of liability on, on their homeowner policy. 
and other people have 500,000. Some have a million dollar umbrella. So it depends on the person to how much protection do you really need. Um, most, well, all the policies that I have seen, the older policies today, have $1,000 for medical, which means that person that slipped and fell, $1,000 to have the ambulance come to your home and take that person to the hospital. So that's 1000 to help pay them for their medical bill up to 1000 uh, yeah, Med pay to about others. $2,500. Yeah. Wait, I'm not Med done. Med pay to others. No, I'm not Go done because that $1,000 yeah. has the doctors setting the ankle <laughs> and so you're right. What I'm yeah. saying is everybody has a thousand on medical, Doesn't and the go for minimum it. they should have they should have five five, five thousand. Probably five. They, they should have five thousand. Yeah. But so then liability if you're going to be sued. Yeah. What if your sidewalk was missing a piece of concrete, and and here comes your friends down, and the wife has a pair of heels on, and in the heel goes, breaks the heel, breaks the ankle, falls, cracks her head on the stairs. Oh. Oh my goodness. Now she's a professional. She's out of work because she. A lot could come from that, right? You know, you just heard the progression of, oh my goodness, she's hurt herself. We have medical bills. We have an injury. We have loss of work. We could have permanent damage with a, a head injury if it, if it happened. You better have the right protection of liability because even though these may be friends, guess what? You had a busted sidewalk. Oh, I know so many friends that sued. Yeah. I mean, they're not friends anymore, but <laughs> I, I, many, many, <laughs> it, it, it happens today. Yeah. yeah. It imagine. happens today. Oh, yes. Imagine not. Yeah. Right. So use that word umbrella. Right. That is an excess liability policy. So that that's above and beyond what your homeowner's has, policy would cover. And umbrella. what your, what your auto has. And your auto. It covers your auto. It covers, if you have boats, <clears throat> you know, your everything. Excess liability to protect yourself against lawsuit. Why would somebody have that? Well, we try to protect any event, any exposure for you. So if your agent knows, again, that getting back to that relationship, knows who you are, knows what your general financial position is, you own a home, you have a business, uh, you make a good living, etc. What is the exposure to you in the event of a lawsuit? We want to make sure that somebody else's pocket is coming before yours. If you have an umbrella, it's the insurance company's pocket that's there before they come at your personal assets. And that's why you would have one. And, and a lot of times, that's enough. A lot of times it's enough, oh, correct. Sure. Historically, in Western Pennsylvania, jury verdict awards <coughs> are lower than just about anywhere in the country. Uh, historically, they don't uh, pay high verdicts. Uh, high verdict award amounts in uh, liability lawsuits. They're lower than anywhere else. And I guess that's the blue collar mentality, but the, those are uh, recent figures. Yeah. yeah, how about that? You can't tell the exact number, but uh, an attorney that I d just recently spoke to uh, informed me of that, and I was surprised. So you're talking, we have our, our, our <coughs> auto insurance, we have this homeowners, and then we have these umbrellas. Mm -hmm. So if we're hitting coverage on all of those, we should be pretty well protected. Abs I think so. I think absolutely. What about our life? We forgot our well, life. We're going to talk oh, about life, life here insurance. In, the, well. in the last segment of the <coughs> show. Yeah. Explain to our audience, please, what a deductible is. That is the amount that you pay to repair your auto or your, your home. Your kitchen is on fire and you have a thousand dollar deductible so they have to put in a seventy eight thousand dollar new kitchen my goodness what kind of house do you have seventy eight thousand no you think that's a lot but the cost of union scale wages today <laughs> and the cost of appliances yes you would be very surprised so that you would pay the thousand dollars that's a deductible first money it, out of your pocket right and the only time you never pay a deductible is on a liability suit you would never pay a deductible if somebody sues you you don't pay a deductible on liability okay yeah uh, i have a question that i wanted to ask before and didn't get around to asking it mm -hmm. i am, am involved in an accident where somebody hit me and i'm not charged with that accident it was you know stopped in traffic somebody rear-ended me and so it was forth. not your fault not my fault any which way you look at it mm -hmm. can that hurt me in in a sense with my coverage in the future when I add a car or do, make a change? Well, I can tell you it can't affect you. 
it's it's what we call an incident. It's okay? on your so, record. So what will happen is uh, insurance companies look at incidents, accidents, at fault, not at fault, not at fault. as an incident. So an incident doesn't, a not at fault accident shows up is that you were involved in either your company paid out or there was a claim paid out. You were involved, there was an incident. So it was a not at fault. So now when you go to, to shop coverage or we go to shop coverage for you, because let's say the company had a rate increase and Darlene says, oh my goodness, we can't have him subject to a rate increase. He's had a clean record, he's a good client. Let's try to keep his premium where he was. And we go to shop you, there's that incident. Wasn't your fault, but it affects your rating factors for the new shop that we're about to do for you. Even though- It was not your fault. Not your fault. And nothing went against your insurance whatsoever. There were no medical charges against your insurance, nothing. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. It can happen, yeah. Every company views incident differently. Well, you know, that's almost an injustice by, yes, <laughs> by, by the insurance industry. Yes, well, it's what because people don't realize. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes when it comes to your agent recommending, A, what company that you should be with, B, what coverages you should have and why, and then hopefully we're in a competitive situation where we have the price tag that works for you. Uh, it, it's not as easy as people think you know, it's not just press a button and here's the rate. There is an awful lot that goes into it. Uh, and a well-qualified, licensed, knowledgeable agent will help you get there. And they'll give you that value for the dollar along with the service. How long would that stay on a record, for example? I mean, it's- I think it's, it's three years. Most it's companies, three, three years. years. And then it just drops and off. And that's a speeding ticket, 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 is, speeding yeah. ticket the ticket. same way? Mm -hmm. However, some companies, although they don't uh, rate you after three years for that ticket, they see it there for five years. Right. Some companies look That's at it true. for five years. And it's an incident, again, okay. yeah. yeah. So you mentioned life insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a funny term because you don't collect until you're dead. So it, it um, probably should be called death well, insurance. Well, you don't collect, but your beneficiary <laughs> yeah. collects. So, so what is life insurance? What is what it life says. insurance? It's a way uh, for you to feel better knowing that your loved ones will be taken care of when you're gone. Um, and, and the kind of life insurance one purchases is a big oh decision. If you uh, have four children and a mortgage and a car payment, you certainly want, and if you don't come home from work that night, for whatever reason, you wanna make sure that your wife can take care of the children, the house, everything. So. Every person is so different with what they should get, how much they should get. I mean, it, you really have to sit down and go over the so basics. So that's not for you, that's for your family. It really is. So it's not like disability insurance that if you become disabled, you, Correct. you, you collect money. Well, but in some cases, life insurance can be for you though. And, and people don't realize that the type of policy structure that you have or combinations of policies uh, life insurance is absolutely used as a living benefit, not just a death benefit for certain people. Uh, policies today, uh, we have term insurance and whole life insurance What's and variable insurance. Term insurance is generally inexpensive. It lasts for a specific term. Uh, it's much cheaper than whole life. It doesn't pay you any money back in dividends or cash value while you own it. Uh, and it's generally bought uh, at younger ages in much higher amounts uh, and it's bought for protection. It's bought for those things Darlene just said. Uh, generally where there's a young family, there's children, we're trying, you know, there's a, maybe a single uh, breadwinner in the family, husband or wife, and we're trying to uh, cover the debts, the mortgage, the uh, amount of indebtedness they have to credit card companies, car payments, et cetera, as well as income replacement. People forget that your job pays the bills, right? Your income pays the uh -huh. bills. Well, if that income is gone and you want your family to stay in your family home, we have to have enough money to replace your income to pay those bills, right? So term insurance is a way to grab a lot of life insurance death benefit for protection needs without paying the uh, higher amount in premium that uh, whole life insurance provides. When I say what does insurance do for life, whole life insurance pays you back. Mm -hmm. You pay a premium, it affords a death benefit to your beneficiary, whoever that is, but your beneficiary sometimes isn't necessarily just your spouse. Your beneficiary could be the company you work for, a partner, 
something in that regard for business. And so when I say it could be a living benefit, a lot of traditional whole life policies today build significant wealth inside the policy, dividends and cash value, which is usable in future years to supplement whatever might be uh, your requirements at a uh, future need. So those policies build cash. We kind of have a DNA in the agency. We use a combination of both. Mm -hmm. Of course, every life insurance agent is different. So it's a very personal preference. It but, is. Uh, for the amount of time that we've been in the business, we're a big believer in you purchase a lot of 20 or 30 year guaranteed premium, guaranteed death benefit term insurance for your protection needs in a chunk of whole life that pays you back so that you own something permanent because when that term expires 20 or 30 years from now and that term insurance is gone, you'll have a whole life policy that will be at that point paying for its own premium. You will no longer be paying out of pocket. It will have a death benefit that will stay with you forever and cash value for you to use if you might need it for something later in so life. So that's what you're referring to when you mentioned variable. Well, there is variable life insurance. We, we're kind of believers in traditional whole life insurance, which is not variable insurance uh, because we like the word guarantee associated with life insurance. And most people should try to have that word associated with their life insurance. You do not want anything at, at risk or at take a chance with life insurance. Uh, variable means variable, it could change. We don't want anything to change with life insurance. Yeah. We don't want the rate to change. We don't want the death benefit to change and we want to make sure it's there when it's needed. It's like a variable or a fixed mortgage, huh? Yes. Comparison Correct. There. Well, we're at the end of the show. Oh, uh, we've thank had you so much thank for both you. of you taking You're the time welcome. out of your busy schedules to come on and, and inform our, our audience thank on, you for having on us. a number of topics I'm sure they're not aware of. Right, but we so, appreciate being here. So we, we thank Patrick McDonald and Darlene Butka mm -hmm. from Progressive Insurance Planners right. in Bridgeville. And I, I know your contact information was put up from time to time. Okay. Uh, they have any questions. I'm sure you're happy to answer questions, even yes. if you're not a, a client of, of Progressive Insurance you're right. Planners. You do not we're, have to we're be. available by phone in right. our Bridgeville office, the contact Anytime. information, or look us up on our website, uh, Facebook, Twitter, it's all there. So okay. today. Mm. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Happy pe Healthy Pets, Happy Owners. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. When you're happy and healthy, life is wonderful. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. The radio show is off.